So today we're looking at Google My Business Insights. Google My Business Insights is a great tool and a way to help you if you're trying to grow your business using local SEO. So join me now as we find out how Google My Business Insights is going to really help you grow your business. So Google My Business Insights is, as we say, a really useful tool. And the reason being is that as you start to use promotions, uh, as you uh, make your effort to produce uh, perhaps improved branding, uh, better SEO on your website itself, maybe you promote uh, your business through advertising, it's a great way of just seeing how people are arriving at your listing and what types of things are people doing? So are people picking up the phone to call you? How many people were able to contact you using the app or the get a quote uh, button that's on your Google My Business listing? Uh, Insights will give you answers to probably all the questions that you're asking to find out whether or not what you've done so far with your Google My Business listing has having an effect. So is it having an effect? Well, we're going to dive in now in detail to find out a lot more as to what can give you the signals as to what's improving. And also we'll look at keywords. We'll look at how people have found you. We'll look at whether something's organically produced or whether it was just found through a search engine or through an advertising situation. We'll see whether people are coming through phones or through desktops or through laptops. In fact, pretty much every question you've got regarding your stats and your account can be answered in today's lesson. And at the end of it, I've got something quite special for you if you're a WordPress user. So look out for that too. So I'm Zane from Zanet Design and I use my 20 years to help people like you grow your business locally. Hopefully you'll find this a really useful and uh, perhaps beneficial for you to see where you're at, to take stock and see what you can do in the future updates for your Google My Business listing. So let's dive straight in to Google My Business Insights. So to find insights, you need to first of all go into your Google My Business, log into your location, and then on the main uh, area here on the left-hand side of the main menu, about the fourth one down, you've got insights. If you click on that, then your insights will come up. Now in this case, if you see this where it says discover your customers, verify for insights, what that means is, is basically you haven't verified your business yet. So if you see this type of verification needed, first of all, when you go to insights, then the first thing you need to do is you need to verify your business. And that probably means asking for a postcard to be sent or as you'll see, uh, there is a way to have it without a postcard, which I'll show the video for that right now. So that's a, a link above if you haven't got uh, any other way of verifying your business. But anyway, let's move on. That's not the purpose of this particular um, idea. So what we'll do is we just uh, consider then what you can do if you go into your insights, you start to see that the first part is uh, some keywords. So what this tells you is what types of keywords people were using to find you. So whether they used a query in Google or whether they used it on a Google My Business Maps, it's listing uh, the either way, however they've come across your Google My Business listing, these are the keywords that we use. So in these cases here, when it's less than 10, it just shows you, and I've not um, put in my top queries, but I've just shown you some of the ones that I get found uh, in the lower down regions. So things like someone's looking for um, a design consultant. Uh, so less than 10 people were looking for that and they found me coming up in the Google results, Google map results, or it might be a design company or a design agency in Bournemouth and so on. So that's how that works. That's your, um, your kind of keywords. And that tells you quite a lot of information. Now, this is the next part here is how your keywords then lead to either direct traffic. So it comes directly to you. Um, so these are ones that have just found you literally from, um, as it says, here, customers who find your listing searching from for your business name or address. So they're looking for you directly. Uh, the second one, which is again here, which is over half, is discovery, which is these are ones that have never found you before. So customers who find your listing searching and they find it for a category or product or a service. So slightly different. And then branding, 
which uh, again, some uh, uh, need to establish the greater your branding, uh, the more you're really growing Google My Business. And it takes time to grow branding. So when you have your logo and you start to try and get people to know more about the business, then your branding will eventually start to grow. So this is people that are actually looking for you. So they put your business name in and they came across you here directly. So those are kind of some areas there. You'll notice as you go through the insights, they do give you some kind of tips as to how you can improve things. So if you wanted to increase your uh, business uh, and you might want to use one of these keywords. So say, for example, you felt that you wanted to improve as being found as a creative agency in Bournemouth, well, then write a, a post, title it the Creative Agency in Bournemouth and tell everyone why you are a useful creative agency in Bournemouth and how others have contacted you as a creative agency in Bournemouth. Again, it's a very fine line between filling it up with too many keywords. But these, the, the reason why these are so useful is it tells you how people are finding you. It tells you what Google thinks you are as well. And these should be very much closely related to what, what your business is about. And if they do, to get this to go above 10, then you need to be posting about it. So kind of follow the process. That's actually in the same box. That's a really useful basis. And it's similar here. So we've got this uh, uh, breakdown of how I'm being found. And then here, businesses with recent photos. So photos are another way to attract traffic. And so if you post photos, you'll see that. In fact, what Insights tells you is that photos are particularly important at gaining new fresh traffic. Now here, you just get a bit more of a breakdown. So if you're interested in knowing, do people come through searching for me on Google Maps or on Google, it's on Google itself, or do they come to me via looking on maps? So sometimes people, they'll just pull up a map, show me a, a, a um, say a flower shop near me, and they'll, find, they'll see it on the map. Uh, others will just go to Google and say, show me a nearby flower map and then your listing will come up in what's known as the, the three pack, which again, I've got a video about that, which you can look at uh, in the uh, above uh, information. So click on that and you'll see how that works. And then this is really useful to tell you a bit more about how people contact you. So do they come directly to the website? Do they come via phone calls? Do they come via messaging? And uh, again, you can only have the messaging really if you've got the app uh, and the quote button in place. So again, there's a video for that. So if you want to see the video, then click above in the eye and that will show you a video of how you can then add the request a quote button. Or it could be if you've got a different type of uh, business, it may not be a request a quote. It might be um, book a room if it's a hotel, or it might be a book a trip if it's a, an agency for travel. So those vary, but uh, ultimately, again, you'll know how you want people to react with you. Do you want them to come to the website? Do you want them to give you a call or a text? And if you do get calls, then it breaks down where the customers are come from. And then finally you have here as well, how uh, photo views are affecting your traffic as well. So you notice sometimes you'll get a spike and it's because a particular image has really struck people when it was uploaded and people are looking at it. And uh, thousands, if not millions, can actually discover you just through your photos. So consider how you're branding yourself, how your photos are talking about the work you've done recently. Let's just taking this uh, again, just going back to this whole thing then about traffic. You notice at the end of that, it wants to then sell advertising to you. And this is really where I think Google's going with all this. It wants you to create an ad uh, to get more traffic if you're not comfortable with how that's working. So this is integrating in effect Google Ads or what was known, used to be known as AdWords. And then finally, as you go onto photo views, notice again, you've got this opportunity to stay ahead post more uh, photos to keep yourself ahead of the competition. And then finally, you notice as well that when you post photos, you've got the, as the owner, you've got, so I've got 112 in there, uh, but I've got customers have posted seven photos. So again, it just shows you the relationship between the two because uh, again, you do want customers to, to to post photos too. So imagine if you're a restaurant, then you posting uh, photos of your lovely meals is one thing, but actually if customers are, are, are posting photos of what they really get, then that's gonna have a greater impact on whether people rate your restaurant. So that's uh, kind of one way of looking at it. Just to run through some similar stats, this is a different business I've been doing work with, and you notice how branding is really 
working for them. So branding is now working uh, on this month and it's just as much uh, direct as, as um, it's just having just as much effect as the direct and discoveries as well. So it's a good three way balance on this one that I'm particularly looking at. So this thought here of listing on search and listing on maps, what that di the difference is, is if it's on maps, then they'll be on maps itself and they'll find the business. But the listing on search, what that is, if I can just pull up um, this here. So this is a uh, photo of a search for flower shop near me. And this is a listing on the map itself. Uh, sorry, a listing on Google search. So we're actually within Google search. We haven't actually gone to the map. Um, to go to the map, you'd be in the map and then you'd be searching for flower shops near me. And that'd be a, that'd be then considered if I did that now. So if I did say, um, you know, if I put in uh, flower shops, uh, Oxford, and then I then clicked on say this advert here, Daisy's flower shop, then that's now a search within the map. Whereas the one before was a search within uh, Google search itself. So hopefully that makes sense of what this is here. The difference between a search on the Google and a search in the maps. And then you've got customer actions as well. So again, if anyone's making calls or visiting the website from that and so on. So that's kind of a, a, the photos we've looked at before. Just another example of this um, for another client. They also, um, on some areas, when they then ask for directions, so on here, for example, they've not only have they had visits to the website, but they've had requests for directions and also to call you. All these things here mean a lot to Google and you really ideally want to try and get all of them balance nicely if you can. You can't force it on people, but as you become more and more popular as a local business, these things are gonna naturally happen. Uh, so they get recorded by Google, and then in effect, you can even see where people are trying to find your business. So that can be useful to know. And also things like when people do make phone calls, you can see what day of the week it was, you can see what time it was, time of the day, and so on. And uh, then you can see also how your photo views um, are compared to others. So again, there's some work to be done here for this client and so on. So there's, with all these things and all these insights, they're really giving you a, a lot more of an understanding of some real basic questions. So if we were to ask a few questions like, uh, how many users have found your business using keywords? Well, then you could go to, uh, as we saw, um, Earlier on, you can see how many keywords are being used and how each keyword has uh, has information and a number of uh, traffic associated with it. And certainly that's something to optimize when you write posts. If someone said to you, how do I know if my branding is working? Well, then you can get information about branding here. So we saw that in uh, the case of some of these, uh, branding is obviously working here quite well. So getting branding working for you is another way. How do I know how many views I've had? Well, again, that gives you that information here on how many searches people have found you on. Uh, has an event or promotion worked? Well, you would expect to see like it peaks. If you put a promotion together, you'd expect this to peak right out. Uh, so that would be the way in which you can view whether a promotion has worked and how it's worked as well, the details. Is my, um, is my traffic natural or organic? Well, again, you get that kind of difference between discovery and direct, which gives you that information. Um, and then when it comes to customer actions as well, how many have picked up the phone? How many have asked for directions? How many have used the map? So again, we saw some information on that. So for example, here we saw people visiting, picking up the phone, uh, contacting us, looking for directions, using the app as well would be a, a text, which I think we saw on a, a different one. Was that uh, down here? I think we had some text visits, messaging. So there's all sorts of ways in which that can be discovered as well. So I promised you finally, there'll be a really useful little tool that you can use in conjunction with these things and to help to optimize your local business. And this tool, if you've got a WordPress website, is called SiteKit. And you can find it by going to, um, so if we just pull that in there, if you go to uh, Google um, and type in SiteKit, look for SiteKit, and then you can install SiteKit, or you can do it from within WordPress. And what this does is it helps you to understand a bit more about where your traffic's coming from. So it's very closely in a, integrated with what we've looked at, but it, it takes it through the analytics uh, rather than through 
So through Google Analytics rather than through Google My Business uh, Insights. But you'll find a lot of this will then match up with what you've looked at. So it uses the Search Console, the Analytics, Page Insights. And if you're using the um, AdSense as well, it combines that in to see whether your um, earnings as well from it. And basically, if you're a site owner, you'll find it integrates nicely into everything that you're doing. And it will help you to just know whether the keywords you're going to use and whether they're having an impact not just on your Google My Business uh, listing, but also to make sure it has an impact on your search engine optimization for your website as well. So you'll find that really useful. Now, if you want to know more about how to improve your Google My Business, now you've got this understanding of insights, then you may want to look at one of these videos that follows. So pick one of these two and I'll see you over there.